how we do it here. I love the other guys, and this 4200 Atlas inline six cylinder definitely qualifies as the other guy. So what do you say? Let's make some noise. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some naturally aspirated modifications on our other guys, the AmeriBear 4.2 liter Atlas inline six cylinder. We're gonna test long tube headers, exhaust, air intakes, variable cam timing, ignition timing, air fuel ratio, you name it, we're gonna test it. So let's get going. testing on the 4200 we put this thing up on the dyno in stock trim basically an open throttle body no accessories the factory exhaust manifold with a three inch exhaust going to a muffler and we did not have the vvt activated we had it locked out meaning it was probably in its most advanced position but this this did give us an opportunity to run a couple of tests on ignition timing without varying the camshaft so what we did was ran the motor and dialed in the air fuel and then dialed in the time we started out at 24 degrees of total ignition timing and here's what happened when we increased the timing up to 26 degrees we picked up power now you might be asking hey richard yeah what happened we lost power down here below 4000 actually when we were doing the tuning um eric who did all the cool tuning on this thing using the mega squirt um actually took timing away there on that run below 4000 rpm so it lost time it lost power because he took timing away but added timing out here past 40 past 4000 as we see we picked up power and this trend continued now eric put the timing back in it at 30 degrees and the power was back up it doesn't obviously like having uh, more timing here at 3000 rpm because it didn't gain anything so but it did pick up power out here at the top so we were making we went from a total of 246 horsepower up to 266 so we gained about 20 horsepower with the ignition timing unfortunately this thing did not seem very responsive to changes in air fuel we varied it from 11.0 all the way up to 13.0 and it didn't seem to make a big difference in power but the timing did make a difference but not nearly as much of a difference as when we turned on the variable cam timing initial testing on the 4200 with ignition timing it was time to obviously turn on the cam timing and as you know the variable cam timing is only on the exhaust cam so here's what happened this is the test that we ran with the variable cam timing locked out it made 266 horsepower and 272 foot pounds of torque you can see the torque curve is fairly flat for this motor which is very impressive but here's what happened after uh, Calvin helped us out and sent us a tune that showed us um, how to, you know, equate the variable cam angle with the variable cam duty cycle. So once we got that dialed in, or what I should say, once Eric got that dialed in, thanks Calvin for your help on that, we were able to adjust the cam timing. And the first thing we did was increase the cam timing. Um, we commanded 20 degrees, basically a variable cam, um, 20 degrees of exhaust cam. And here's what happened. We picked up power everywhere by activating the VVT. And you can see the peak power jumped up to 281 horsepower. Peak torque was all the way up to 286 foot pounds. And the interesting thing is it gained power even down at 2500 RPM. And it was no longer making peak torque down at 3000 RPM. Peak torque had shifted all the way up to about 4700. But we worked on there. So what we did was increase the amount of um, exhaust, exhaust cam timing and we jumped it up from 20 degrees to 25 degrees and picked up even more power peak power now was up at 292 horsepower 
and 292 foot-pounds, which is interesting because this motor is rated at 275 horsepower and 275 foot-pounds, so those are both even. Now we run with cold water and no accessories and no air intake and an open exhaust and obviously an optimized tune here, so we make more power than the factory rating. But it's interesting to show the effect of the variable cam time. It definitely responds in power. Now we tried to command even more cam time and we tried to go up to 30, but it showed no gain. So I think what happened is it actually didn't change. There was no more variable cam timing basically to be had. So this was our peak numbers with the variable cam timing, but big changes from the variable cam. the effect of retarding the exhaust cam timing essentially it picked up quite a bit of power what I decided to do was put on one of my Super Richie air intakes it's basically a big three inch section of tubing with a radius entry on it and then the silicone coupler to attach it to the factory throttle body now we had already um, modified the factory throttle body we had uh, <laughs> changed it from an electronic drive-by wire to a manual drive-by wire or actually uh, drive-by throttle cable basically that allowed us to just manually operate it rather than relying on the electronic throttle body. But putting the air tube on it and the radius entry improved the power. And here's what happened. We were running our, this was with our variable cam set at 25 and that was with the open throttle body. Here's what happened when we added the air intake that's in red. You can see we picked up a fair bit of torque all the way up to 298 foot-pounds. Peak power was up to 294 horsepower. And it showed a little bit of a gain here. And this kind of is a pretty good indicator that maybe the factory motor in the car would also respond to a cold air intake over the um, factory air box. But air intake test right here. So obviously I think it adds power, especially when you do a straight tube like we did with the radius entry, which I don't know that you could do in the car. Now that we've done the intake mod, let's check out an exhaust mod. So that's one down, fingers crossed. try some exhaust mods. Now my buddy Jason over at JT Fab whipped up this very cool tubular exhaust manifold or basically it's a header for this 4200. Now this particular thing would not fit probably in any vehicle but it fits the dyno very well and that's what we wanted. And I and really I wanted him to make this so that we could mount the turbo to it and I wanted to kind of double as a long tube NA header and as it turned out and I've been told this by other people that uh, these things just do not respond to a long tube header. So this was a perfect, perfect opportunity to find out if that's the case. And that's what we found out. So running with a stock exhaust manifold and the air intake, our combination produced 294 horsepower and almost 298 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we added the long tube header. It actually picked up a little bit of torque in the middle, but lost power out at the top. Not a lot, not so much that you'd notice, but, but why make a header change um, if you're actually going to lose a little bit of power at the top, even if you picked up a little bit here in the middle. As I said, this was more done to allow us to run a bunch of different turbochargers effectively, and, the, and, and it will definitely do that. So uh, interestingly enough, we also tried um, 
taking the muffler away and really saw um, no gain in power from taking the muffler away. We were thinking maybe, hey, maybe the muffler's a restriction, but as it turned out, it was not. <laughs> now let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from our little test adventure with our other guys, Amero Barra, the 4.2 liter Atlas inline six cylinder. Before we get to our list, I need to thank a couple of people. I need to thank Mark, I need to thank Calvin, I need to thank Eric, I need to thank the guys from Megasport and anybody else who helped with this project. Without you guys, this kind of stuff wouldn't get done. But what did we learn? Well, we learned the following thing. First of all, ignition timing definitely helps. Variable cam timing definitely helps. The air intake, also helped. The thing that surprised me is that the long tube header didn't add any power. Now sure, it added a little bit of torque in the middle, but it actually lost a little bit of power at the very top. But you know what? I'll tell you what's going to happen. When we add boost, it's going to work just fine. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Check out part two. We've got boost for our Amerabarin.